Kaleidoscope, the diverse list of a multitude of TV and film performances proves her long-standing and stable career in Hollywood. The little girl she once was always had tricks up her sleeve, like lying about her age and name in order to pass as an older girl in order to get acting jobs. The young, ambitious, an energetic Jane Wyman, formerly Sarah Jane Mayfield or Sarah Jane Folks, eventually descended to star status in a matter of no time and eventually had the honor to be the best actress Oscar recipient in 1949. Jane grew up between Missouri and California, worked random and insubstantial jobs and was raised by her neighbors since her biological father passed away early and her mother would visit her once in a while from Cleveland. Jane, the only child, was left to her own devices despite her strict adoptive parents. Jane enrolled in dance classes and eventually tried her hand in radio singing. By the time she was 16, she was already married for the first time out of her five marriages. She made the executive decision to move to Hollywood at the age of 15 after dropping out of high school. She joined a chorus line, of course, due to her talent in dance, and her transformation to become a Hollywood star had begun, and she plucked her eyebrows pencil thin, bleached her hair, and made a connection with a successful dance director for Hollywood films. His name was Leroy Prince. This connection got Sarah Jane her first set of minor film roles. All of this happened in early 1930s, during the Great Depression. Her paychecks for the roles in films like The Kid from Spain, College Rhythm, and Anything Goes were very much needed for her and her family back in Missouri during these tough times. Soon enough, in 1936, when she was 19 years old, Jane was signed to Warner Brothers for a $60 a week acting contract for the time being. In addition, Jane officially took on the stage name of Jane Wyman. But roles most suitable to her did not come flooding in magically. It took a solid few years for Jane to blossom into a mature and serious young woman capable to play serious and mature characters. But before that happened, she got typecast in dumb blonde roles in B-movies. But we know Jane was no dumb blonde. She was street smart and naturally intelligent and talented. These qualities were of course noticed only by mid-1940s. By 1945, Wyman was ready to be the leading lady of her films. No longer blonde, but brunette, and age 28, Wyman appeared in The Lost Weekend. This film won four major Oscars at the 1946 Academy Awards. It was clear that Wyman's career was going to go full steam ahead. The following year, in 1947, Wyman headlined in The Yearling, the film for which she received an Oscar nomination for Best Actress. This achievement we can call the appetizer, just as a preparation as to what would happen at the Academy Awards two years later. Wyman, who already had a strong fascination with the Broadway production of Johnny Belinda was cast as the main role of a deaf, mute woman named Belinda. The incredibly dark, emotionally and visually intense film was so successful. Jane Wyman underwent intensive preparation to play such a powerful role in a controversial film at that time. And for this effort and touching performance, Wyman won the Best Actress Oscar in 1949 and also the Golden Globe. This was the first ever Best Actress Oscar given to a non-speaking role. Wyman was speechless that she had won. She was nudged by Jerry Wald, the producer of the movie, out of her daze to get up and accept her award. In a bit of a frazzle, Jane went on to utter one of the shortest speeches in Oscar history. She said, I accept this very gratefully for keeping my mouth shut once. <laughs> I think I'll do it again. Jane Wyman definitely put her stamp 
in such a wonderfully rich and quickly developing era of cinema. She continued to load her filmography and also television all the way into the late 1970s. It was a diverse range of comedies, dramas and thrillers. Wyman's undeniable range of acting talent allowed her career to span almost 60 years. On top of that, she was a philanthropist for the Arthritis Foundation. Among Wyman's ex-husbands was Ronald Reagan, to whom she was married in the 1940s, and who would become later the President of the United States. They had children together, and Reagan was actually a starting actor too in his younger years. That is how they met on the set of a film. It was Jane Wyman's relentless attitude that carried her to a successful and admired life. And her approach to the art of acting was inspirational. She said this about her preparation for a role. I was determined to act from the inside out, to disregard all surface effects and delve into the character of a sturdy woman who endured hardship stoically and who concealed a deeply emotional nature under a frosty, pragmatic exterior. I meditated on the role at a great length. I wanted to get to the bottom of this woman's psyche, and in doing so, I dredged up all the early hardships and disappointments in my own life, looking constantly for some points of reference that would link our respective inner schemes. And this deep, almost poetic way of preparing for a role is what makes someone a leading lady.